get you set for a windy and warm Wednesday here on Weather for Weather Geeks. Tuesday evening edition, Valentine's Day. Hope you and yours had a uh, an enjoyable Valentine's Day today. The weather was certainly enjoyable for most of the day. The clouds started rolling late, but it was still warm. It was still generally sunny for a lot of the morning and the midday today. You know, we can look at a lot of metrics and stats to kind of describe uh, the state of the winter season, of course, it being very warm. One of the ones I like to talk about, of course, uh, in, in February is how much ice is on the Great Lakes. And the answer is record low amounts. Only 7% ice coverage on the Great Lakes, a record low percentage for the middle of February. And this is traditionally getting pretty close to the peak of ice season on the Great Lakes as a whole. And most importantly for us, uh, Lake Erie, this purple line's the historical average. It kind of reaches its peak right around that second, third week of February. And while we did nudge up uh, to around 40% or so when it got uh, briefly cold, uh, last week, we're basically down to nothing on Lake Erie. It's like 1% or even a little less than that at the traditional peak. So, you know, it's not unheard of, but it is still uh, kind of exceptional uh, how little ice there is on Lake Erie, the Great Lakes, and of course our local lakes as well. Uh, 52 was the high today, one degree shy of where we were yesterday and the day before when we, we, we uh, reached 53 both days. Uh, the high this afternoon, a balmy 71 Dallas, 70 Atlanta, 70 in Raleigh. Where's winter on this map? It's really hard to find. These western climate sites have not reported their high for the day just yet, but this is where all the chilly air compared to the average remains out in the west as opposed to here in the eastern half of the country. The leading edge of this rain shower activity, most of this is not reaching the ground. The air is very dry overhead. Uh, relative humidity values were very low this afternoon, so a lot of this is not going to make it to the ground. The more legitimate rains out here, I think we'll see a shower or two as we head through the overnight for tonight. Warm fronts heading our way and as low pressure uh, starts really cranking up and coming north and east over the next couple of days, uh, this is gonna be a pretty good wind producer. So wind uh, alerts are out uh, for a good chunk of the lower and middle Ohio valleys and up into the Southern Great Lakes, not quite to Eastern Ohio, Western PA, although it's gonna get windy here tomorrow afternoon, probably a little windier in places like Dayton and Lima and perhaps as far east as Columbus or so. Uh, winds will really start cranking up by midday. You'll notice it by the end of the morning, and especially as we get into the afternoon, it's going to be bright and sunny. Uh, the atmosphere very well mixed for our Wednesday, and so we'll have no trouble seeing occasional gusts of 40 to 45, perhaps even up to 50. But then the wind will diminish very quickly by tomorrow evening once the sun goes down. The other story tomorrow, other than the wind, is the sunshine and the warmth. The record high tomorrow doesn't stand a chance. It's 65. I think we'll break that by one or two in the afternoon at the uh, latest on our way to maybe 69 or 70 in the afternoon. Now, this is not uh, the warmest February temperature overall on record, of course, but it's pretty darn warm for the middle of the uh, month. These types of 70 degree readings are a little more common once we get past, say, the 22nd, 23rd of February. But yeah, windy, warm, sunny in the afternoon for our Wednesday. Warm front tracks our way then tomorrow night. Temperatures will rise late. And uh, then Thursday is kind of an interesting setup. Uh, we've got uh, low pressure, which is rapidly strengthening and heading up into southern Indiana, northern Kentucky, southwest Ohio. I do think this will bring us a period of rain right around midday, early afternoon. After that, things become more scattered. And you don't see a whole lot on our model here by mid-evening, but there is the possibility right around this time right here, eight, seven, eight, nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock, that some sort of thin line of showers and embedded thunder will try to come east. You don't see a lot on this run of the model, but it's going to be possible that there's going to be some sort of severe weather threat that actually materializes for a brief time Thursday evening. Probably not quite as high of a threat locally as off to our west where uh, the, the atmosphere will have a little more time to destabilize and the wind shear will be maximalized. Uh, for us around here, I, I do think it's kind of a marginal threat, but SPC today, the Storm Prediction Center, on day three did uh, put a lot of Eastern Ohio and Northwest PA in the slight risk, two on that one to five scale. You don't see a lot of day three slight risks around here, even in the spring and summer. Uh, marginal risks much, much more common on day three, um, but they pulled the trigger because while we don't have a tremendous amount of instability, there's a ton of wind shear in the atmosphere coming up on our uh, Thursday, and especially Thursday evening. You'll see when I, I show you the uh, instability product here, CAPE, Convective uh, Available Potential Energy, it basically is very, very low, even off to our west. But this is not the main story. It's going to be one of those low instability but high wind shear type of setups later on Thursday. So I am concerned about the possibility of some low-topped showers and storms coming east a couple of hours after sunset 
Because of the timing, coming a couple of hours after sunset, I would suspect the severe weather threat is not as high locally as off to our west, where the sun may be out for a time, uh, for a brief window at least, uh, during the daylight hours. But this is something we're going to watch, because it gets our attention how much wind shear and wind energy aloft we have coming up late in the day on Thursday. Way above the average, of course, over the next couple of days. A one-day shot of cold on Friday. It'll be cold into Friday night, Saturday morning, but nice weekend coming up. Sunshine in abundance, just like this past weekend. Uh, we'll make our way into the lower 40s Saturday and probably 50 or so on Sunday. And I think we'll stay above the average generally into next week, although the anomalies next week will be quite a bit more muted <laughs> compared to where we've been of late. Still, even as we get into mid-month, still have a lot of questions about March. Uh, it's on the table that March is significantly colder than February this year. It's also on the table that, while it may be closer to average, it's nothing all that significant. Do I think we'll have another blowtorch kind of a setup in March like we did in January and February? No, I don't think that. But it remains to be seen the intensity of any, any cold shots. A lot of, a lot of players uh, on the field, and uh, we just don't have a good sense just yet as to the flavor of March. Today's only February 14th. We've got a lot of time to figure it out. We'll do an initial March outlook either later this week or early next week. In the meantime, thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. Let's do it again after a windy and warm Wednesday.